here and hey Laura how you doing I'm doing great hello everyone happy Tuesday and uh, Wednesday it is <laughs> Wednesday. this week's grown faster than I think it is it's nice and bright and sunny today in the Chicago land area it's in the 50s Woohoo! <laughs> looking like it's going to be spring out I know I'm gonna have Debbie tell you we have an amazing woman today that's so inspirational and has so many things so many talents and so much to say and she's just awesome so i'm gonna hand it over to debbie okay well i i'm just excited here today to be able to share with you guys you know someone that i met and then Lori met we met together kind of thing i don't even know the sequence exactly yeah. how it all happened but through the internet which you guys i gotta say with this like shut down lockdown everything we've all gotten so savvy and it's so easy to meet people now and get to be friends with them and feel like I feel like we're in the same room right now. And I feel like I've known Jill for years, honestly. Um, sh she's an amazing woman. She's an author of a book. She has a lot of expertise in so many arenas. I don't even know where to start. You know, mm -hmm. she she has background in event planning. She has a very positive attitude. She's a Christian woman who has gone through a lot in her life. And what she's taken from everything that she's experienced, she's turned it around and, give, and she's giving people hope, health, and healing through all of this mission that she's doing. And I don't want to take and say anything more about her because you're going to understand yeah. more about her as you listen to her. So with that, I just want to bring you on, Jill, and say thank you so much for spending some time with us today and take it away. And we want to hear what you have to say. Well, thanks, everyone, for having me. I love Debbie and Lori. They're amazing. I want to be best friends with them if they have room <laughs> in between their best friendship. <laughs> I want to be the tag along. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, just to tell you a little bit about me, um, I am 67 years old. And I was in outside sales for 38 years, selling radio advertising, shipping services, technology services, and hospitality. And to take you back, I have now 39 years of recovery from drug addiction, alcoholism, 29 years of recovery from codependency, and going on six years now from eating disorders. And so... Mm -hmm. That's a lot of stuff to process and I'm extraordinarily resilient. Um, but not to take it on the negative end, but letting you know a little bit about my story. I grew up in an extraordinarily dysfunctional home in the suburbs of Chicago. I was raised in North Lake, went to Elk Grove High School and then um, traveled around the country. But um, my mother had borderline personality disorder mm -hmm. and she, ended up having multiple affairs when I was a little girl. From the moment I can remember, the words came out of my mother's mouth that I was double ugly, there was nothing good about me and who would ever want you in your life. And so I had this burden that I carried for years and years and years that who would ever want to be my friend? Who would ever want to marry me? Who would ever anything with me? And so I even had a boy one time a man posted on Facebook saying, oh, I would have loved to have dated you in high school. And I, and I responded and I said, I think you were talking about my sister. And he goes, no, it was you. And I was like, me? Like you really wanted to date me? Because my sister was the homecoming queen. She was the bubbly one. And I was the lost child. And I literally am telling you, I barely spoke a word hardly ever until I was 14 years old. My mother would rage at me and say, would you talk? And I just sit there and just sit on the ground. And I was really tiny. I didn't know, but at five or six years old, I started having horrific stomach aches every time I ate. And my, my father being German descent would say, clean up your plate. And of course, back in the fifties, we ate lots of mac and cheese and pasta and bread. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why I had a tummy ache. So when they kept telling me to eat, I started chewing my food and spitting it out in a napkin. And I didn't know that at that time I was developing an eating disorder. I came to find out in my fifties that I had genetic celiac disease, which is why my stomach was throbbing in pain. And it took till I was 50 to get diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So kind of fast forward again, my mother had multiple affairs 
And at five and a half years old, she left my father for another man and moved us during the daytime to an apartment in Berwyn, Illinois, so she could be close to the man she was cheating on my dad with. So my poor father comes home from work to find us all gone. And he was hysterical, crying, didn't know where we were. Long and short, the man she was having the affair with died suddenly of a heart attack. So my mother's forced to go back to the home, mm-hmm. divorce my dad, and start again. Well, she had to start working, and she took a job at the North, you guys from are from Illinois, the North Lake Bowling Alley, cocktail waitressing at night. Mm-hmm. And so we became Lockheed children at six years old, where we had to figure out how to make our own meals, take care of ourselves, put ourselves to bed. And we had no one taking care of ourselves. And my sister was seven and a half. I was five and a half. Mm -hmm. My brother was like three. And we did this. We never had anyone pray with us anymore. No one redo us. No one hug us. And it was really sad. And so I just, I grew up you know, just wandering around the neighborhood with really barely anything to eat and never felt my two biggest burdens in my life were that I never felt like I belonged and I had no boundaries because we just were wild children. Um, My mother remarried two times. The first man she remarried turned out to be an alcoholic, bisexual Mm -hmm. bigamist who cheated on my mother and was married to three other women. Um, and then she, and he ended up going to jail cause he attempted to murder my mother. And then my mom remarried again when I got to high school and this time or junior high, he, he was an alcoholic and very passive aggressive. And at 14 years old, I found the first guy who paid attention to me. And I went to his house and kissed him. And within a few moments, he pushed me down and raped me at 14 I walked home crying and bleeding and I didn't tell a soul because I thought for sure that I would be blamed for being so stupid to go to a boy's house. And so I held that burden in until I got into my forties and fifties and never knew how much it affected me. But what happened right after the date rape, I started to take amphetamines because I really wanted my body not to develop. I did not want to look feminine. I didn't want boys paying attention to me. So I started to wear blue jeans and flannel shirts and shit kicker boots. And I just wanted to disappear. Um, Again, the abuse in the house got severe. There was sexual abuse, um, horrific emotional abuse, physical abuse. So on my 18th birthday, I could not learn I turned a 25 pocket. No idea to do. Ended up in Chicago. And my very first girl that I met introduced me to two guys and said, hey, we have a house if you want to be roommates. So my very first house was in Old Town Mm. with a play with a Playboy bunny, Mm. a male Chicago probation officer and a male gay cab driver. So when we had parties, we had blacks, we had playboy bunnies. We had, it was not, and that was 18 years old, my first time living on my own. Um, from there, I ended up getting backstage at all the rock and roll concerts in Chicago because Kathy had her playboy ID and so we could get backstage. And so I started to date a guy from Emerson Lake and Palmer in Black Oak, Arkansas. He asked me to marry him. And then I said, no, nah, this isn't what I want. So I ended up hitchhiking and ended up go- living in Arizona <clears throat> for about a year, met a girl and her and I hitchhiked up the coast to Portland. After I lived in Portland for about a year, again, I was in the music stuff, doing the backstage, partying with all the rock and roll stars of the seventies. I ended up in San Diego. And when I got to San Diego, I went to a bar, I was like 19, 20, had my fake ID and met a guy who was a really good looking guy who was a surfer, but he was also a cocaine dealer. So within a few months, I started doing cocaine and within a very short time became addicted. I had gotten down to 97 pounds. My eyes were sunken in. Um, I started to become delusional. I didn't know where I was. We started doing freebasing, which is crack cocaine. 
And so I just was really an addict. And then one day we went to this church, me and Michelle, and I became a Christian and God turned my life around 180 mm -hmm. degrees, um, completely delivered me of drug addiction. Um, but I ended up backsliding one night, getting pregnant, having a child, making a decision not to abort him. And that's my book. My book, book Fiercely Faithful, has a chapter in it called The Essence of Humility, mm -hmm. of how God told me that this baby was a gift from him. So I had my son. He's now 38 years old. I have amazing grandkids. Mm -hmm. And I, he's just given me hope, health, and healing in my life where I've had the best therapist in the world that I've been able to help me process all of the abuse. Um, I still do my own healing. I constantly work on myself to be a better human being. And now I just try to give back to the world and help others heal in their lives. Cause I think it's so important when you've been given a gift yourself, not to hold on to it, but to give it back to others. And so that's kind of, and then I was able to discover my eating disorder, which later on in life, it was restricting and avoiding meals. For any of you that don't know that, that's when you go all day and you forget to eat. I, I just forgot to eat breakfast and then I forget to eat lunch. And then at night I'd start to eat, you know, and binge lots, lots of food. And so my eating disorder was restricted of avoidance disorder with binge eating. And now I'm recovering from that and getting better. So that's kind of who I am, but I love Jesus and I couldn't do life at all without him. And I now live in Branson, Missouri. I moved from Chicago. I've been married 20 years and now I live in Branson and I'm retired, but I never slow down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna turn it to Laura, but I have one thing to say, you know, yeah. our whole thing here we always talk about friends helping friends and jill has become one of our really great friends and jill yeah. you are the epitome of friends helping friends you are just amazing but laura i'm turning it over to you oh thanks debbie thanks jill jill you're absolutely amazing you're so inspirational and i'm sure our our friends and family out there are really everybody could learn something from all her parts of her life but Jill, you have this amazing um, virtual um, retreat coming up. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, thanks so much, Lori. And I'm yeah. so honored that Debbie and Lori have decided yeah. to come. For me, you guys, again, because I grew up in this family where I had no sense of belonging, and I'm going to probably cry, when people show up and say yes, I just like, you mean you're going to come and be with me? And I get so excited. So more so I get excited when people say yes, because I'm like, oh, wow, I can connect with you guys more. And so I'm more excited about that than anything. But the hope, health and healing was a vision God gave me just one night. He woke me up at three in the morning and said, I want you to promote hope in him health in the body because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us mm -hmm. and healing of spirit, mind, and soul. And I want this to be a ministry you share with the world this year. And I'm like, okay, God, how am I supposed to do this? Mm -hmm. And he goes, do a virtual live event and have speakers that will share their stories of hope in their life, health in their life and healing so that as they share their stories, the stories will connect to the audience so the audience can have hope, health, and healing too. So then I said, okay, God, who should I have? And he just lined up these speakers and I, I, some, I didn't even have a clue who they were. And then my, my most beloved Dr. Laura Wood, who I just adore. She's the most amazing woman I've ever met in my entire life. And that's a lot. I've met a lot of people. She is a professor, you guys, from Leslie University, and she teaches wow. graduate students how to become drama therapists. But she's also written six recovery plays in New York, wow. helping even the aphasia community. The aphasia community is those who have had strokes and can't speak. She's wow. taught them through drama therapy how to do movement. It's called embodiment so that they can get their emotions out of their body and, and, and be able to release the pain from their stroke. So she's gonna be our keynote speaker. Wow, 
Yeah, that's, that's holy cow. I mean, I'm so excited for it because it's going to be on uh, March 12th, which is a Friday, and it's going to be from 1 to 6 30 p.m. Eastern time. And it's just like it's just amazing. Now, can people go and go on to a certain site to sign up for this, Jill? Yes, thanks, Lori, for asking. And I came in with the lowest price I could. It's only $28.99. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. You just go on my website, which is Braveheart. I'm going to lean down. Braveheart Workshops with an yeah. S on the end, dot com, and register now, and you'll have a seat. And I just want to say to the audience, I'm just the kind of person that if for some reason you can't afford $28.99, please email me at braveheartworkshops at gmail.com because I just believe this event is going to change your life. And I don't want money to stop you from coming. So if, if you can pay, please pay. But if you can't, don't say no because of money. And oh, you know what else I forgot to say? I'm recording the entire event. And so everybody that registers will get the fully recorded version to listen to in your leisure. It'll take a couple of days to edit it. And so don't, don't say no because you can't come because you're working that day. Still register and you'll get the whole event. And then when you register, there's two boxes that say opt in or opt out. If you opt in, you'll get an email of all the attendees who came so you can connect and network with those who were on the Zoom that day so you can get to know them better. And we are going to have a couple of breakout sessions so you can hope, and I'm going to have the leaders in the breakout session so you can connect with the speakers. That's that amazing. So great. I'm so looking forward to it. Just at a right time, you know, right, right when, right before spring starts, we'll get like a new renewal of ourselves, you know. Uh I'm going to just say that when we're done here, we're going to have that link also on it. We're going to ask Joan um, or Jill, I meant to say Jill, why did I say Joan? Jill, to actually put it on the bottom of, you know, the comment section. And also, Jill, I know you also do some like uh, groups that you do Braveheart ministry type things throughout like the month, a couple times a month in the yeah. evening. I have not been able to attend them due to, yeah. you know, personal like work situations. But this is another thing where you can get some connections. I know that you're working on and, and, and you're meeting and greeting a lot of people. So yeah, well, if you can actually, we changed our schedule. So thanks for bringing it up again. This is always God doing last year. God told me to start doing my own podcast show, which I had the privilege mm -hmm. of interviewing Debbie and Lori just a few weeks ago. So their podcast is on my website, Braveheart Workshops. There's a drop down that says the connection show. Their podcast is on my website. It's on my YouTube channel and all my pages. So I do interviews of people who God directs me to interview. So um, reach out to me on that. And then after, and that was last year where he gave me the um, title of Restore, Renew, and Reconnecting Community. And then he said to start doing a connection Zoom where the audience could join in. So we now do those on the first and third Wednesday of every month from 7 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on a Zoom. Mm -hmm. But you have to go to my website, click the, it's called Connection Circles, join so that I can give you the private Zoom. So if you don't go on there, I can't get you the private Zoom. I like it to be confidential. But we are meeting tonight and we have an amazing speaker, a guy who's a therapist, actually, you guys, who came to one of my Braveheart workshops retreats with Dr. Laura Wood, and he's speaking tonight. And, he, and wow. he's a professional therapist. So oh, he's our guest tonight. Great. That's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah. I can't see, I, I am sure you're going to get some people that are going to reach out to you because, you know, nowadays, right now, people need other people. People need the hope, the health, the healing in every aspect. And we just want to say to you, thank you so much, Jill, for spending the time today, you know, and all, everybody out there that spent their lunchtime with us. But I, we also want to say, you guys, that this is going to be shared on our Facebook. You know, Jill's going to be sharing it on her social media and invite people to watch this because you never know how you're going to help or affect someone else they may be praying for that you know connection that they knew nothing about and then all of a sudden up this pops up you know and you you can share it with them so 
Well, Was and there? before before we head off, I know we're at a hard break. If any of you have loved ones or friends who you've been praying for to come to know God, these speakers will be amazing and it will be helpful. But in final, if you guys could, you know, like in chats, put down if you wouldn't mind. I'd love to connect with Debbie and Lori at a getaway retreat because I want them <laughs> to come to Branson, Missouri and do a getaway where we could all hang together, learn together, grow together and do it in the summer because I'm a water aerobics teacher and I got pools here. So we could have a blast. We can go to shows. So put in the comment section, I'm in for Branson. Mm -hmm. And then me and Debbie and Lori could plan a Branson getaway for you guys. Sounds, sounds like sounds amazing. Sounds, sounds amazing. Great. With that, we're going to say, guys, we're going to let everybody, you know, go on. And we thank you for spending the time today. Again, Jill, we're thanking yes, you. Thank you. And we will have everything all posted. And please, you know, again, just put all your information there. And, and we're, we're thankful that you were able to spend the time with us. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Thank you okay. so much. Bye.